Father, as we uh, come to this place this morning to worship you, God, we come to lift your name above all other names, and we come to worship you, and what we mean, Father, is we just want to, to give you worth, to show you that you are worthy, and so as we, we give up of our time, we come here to show you you are worthy. Father, as we give back to you monetarily, we gather, we show that you are worthy. As we listen to your word, and Father, apply it to our lives, we show that you are worthy in our lives. Uh, Father, I just pray that we have a new understanding of, of your glory, of your majesty, of your strength and power and awesomeness this morning, God, that would move us to worship you uh, to deeper levels and in deeper ways than maybe we ever have before, God, that we would put you above all else in our lives, number one, and that we would, Father, live out the days of our life to, to pursue you, to worship you, to share you with others and make a difference in this world. Father, we pray these things in your son's name. Amen. 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 Well, thank you all for joining us this morning. Uh, what a beautiful November day it is. Man, it feels like November out there, doesn't it? Right? 70 degrees and a little bit rainy and ugh, it's kind of crazy but uh, hopefully you guys all got an extra hour of sleep last night with us setting the clocks back uh, if you if you didn't set your clocks back you've been here a little longer than anybody else because you probably got here an hour early so uh, glad that you're here today still glad that you're sticking it out with us uh, as you can tell uh, Alex and Cody and I look a little different this week we're participating in no shave November, and so we started it off fresh by, we, we totally shaved on November 1st, and we're not shaving again uh, for the rest of our lives, and so uh, I'm sure, I remember how much you guys liked my beard last time, and so, uh, uh, no, I'm just kidding, but, uh, but yeah, uh, gentlemen, you know, if you want to join us here in, in not shaving, save the razors uh, until December, uh, that we, we'd encourage that, we'll join together. Uh, so we're finishing off our Tough Question series today, and this is, I think, our sixth week in it. We've, we've answered, we tried to tackle a bunch of tough questions. We talked about uh, the first week, is it rational to believe that God exists? The second week, I believe, we talked about how can a good God allow suffering? We uh, talked about, Pastor Alex shared about, uh, do all religions lead to the same God? Uh, two weeks ago, we asked the question, can we really trust the Bible? Uh, and then last week we talked about Jesus rising from the dead. Is, it, is that true? Did that happen? How do we know? Is there biblical evidence, extra biblical evidence? We looked at all that. And, and this week what we wanted to do is we wanted to talk and handle a question from the congregation. And so the first week we asked, is there any questions? And uh, we put some posts out there on social media and we got some questions in. Uh, and we're taking one of those questions today and we're going to look at that question and we're going to try to tackle that one this morning. And so if you have your bulletins, you'll see that there's a, a place for message notes in there. If you want to, to write anything down, if you feel like anything would be helpful, also you could maybe put some scriptures or things you want to look at a little bit later. And as always, don't forget, if you have a, a mobile device or tablet and you have the YouVersion Bible app, you can go to the More tab, click the Events page, and we have a, a church event there that has all the sermon notes on there as well. So... The question that we're going to ask today is this. It's an important question for everybody, whether you're a Christian or not a Christian. Uh, the question is this, does how we live matter? Does how we live matter? Does how we go about our daily life, does it make a difference? And the context of this question is this, and this is how it was, it was asked of us. Uh, the question asked of us was, why does it matter what type of life you live on earth? If you are a Christian, and you know you'll spend your eternity in heaven. Why does it matter what we do here on earth? Or another way to put it is, is there any eternal consequence to how we live earthly existence as long as we confess Christ? And so, so maybe you have, maybe you haven't professed Christ as your Savior, uh, call yourself a Christian, a follower of Christ. Um, maybe you have, maybe you haven't, but, but if you have, how, how does this life that we now live until that one day when we get to be with Christ, how does that matter? Does it matter? Can we do whatever we want? Are we free just to go about it because we know we're saved? Or do, do we have to live a, a certain way or for a specific purpose? Uh, so the question is, does how we live matter? And today I want to tell you that I believe that how you live, how I live, how we live, I believe that it definitely matters. And, and I believe that it matters because I believe how we live 
makes a difference. Not just a, a temporal a a difference here in this world, which is great, but also it has the, the opportunity to make an eternal difference. And so I'm going to look at a couple things with you today based on that idea, that argument, that how we live does matter. I want to ask some more questions. Uh, I want to start by sharing a passage of Scripture. And so if you have your Bibles, open them up to the book of Ephesians chapter 5. Ephesians chapter 5, that's in the New Testament toward the end of your Bible. This is one of the letters that Paul the Apostle wrote to the church in Ephesus, so applicable to us today because he's writing it to a church, a, a group of people who are trying to figure out this Jesus thing and how do I live it out and how do we love each other and care for one another and care for our world and how do we do this, how do we live? And so Paul writes this passage, this book, to that church. And uh, we talked about this verse actually like a couple months ago, maybe like seven or eight weeks ago. And, and we talked about it when we were, we were discussing uh, how we make the best use of our time in life and how we need to, to make the best use of our time and, and scheduling and, and creating margin in our life and uh, making time for God and making time for rest and those types of things. Uh, it was a great message, really great message. Uh, I'm just kidding. That was a joke. Okay. Uh, so, uh, moving on. Let's look at this passage of Scripture. Uh, Ephesians 5, verses 15 through 16. This is what Paul says. He says, Look carefully, then, how you walk. And let's stop right there. Uh, the first thing we have to understand is that Paul's not talking about our physical walk. He's not talking about, like, be really careful how you walk and, and that type of thing. Nobody does that now because everybody's on their phone when they're trying to walk anyway. What Paul is talking about is when he says walk, he's referencing your daily life, your daily activities. So look carefully then how you go about your daily life. The things you do, the things you say, the way you treat people, the way you respond to people treating you. Look very carefully at the way that you walk, at the way you go about your daily life. And he says, uh, not as unwise, but as wise. Verse 16, making the best use of the time because the days are evil. What Paul is talking about here is he's talking about an opportunity that you and I have. Uh, everybody say opportunity. 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 I mean, opportunity is a good, it's a good word, right? If I, if I believe I have an opportunity to do something, I'm usually talking about that is a good thing. Like an opportunity is something that I'm looking for, something that could really help me, could really be a blessing, a benefit to me. It's an opportunity is usually discussed as a positive thing. And so Paul is here giving us an opportunity that we have during our lifetimes as believers, as followers of Christ, that, that you and I have to be aware that we have an opportunity to make an impact on this world, an opportunity to help spread the hope and the message of Jesus Christ. And he ends this whole saying, saying, you've got this opportunity, walk wise, be smart, watch carefully how you walk. And he ends this whole sentence by saying, the days are evil. The days are evil. And what's Paul talking about here? We know that there's a lot of evil in our world, right? And, and that's nothing new. There was evil in the world then. We know that there's a lot of evil going on in our world. Why is Paul referencing the days are evil. What Paul's trying to do here is he's trying to communicate to you and to me and to the church in Ephesus here. He's trying to communicate with us that we must live with a sense of urgency. That we must live with a sense of urgency. Like we've got to get after it. We've got to get going. Now listen, uh, my wife sometimes will go to her in-laws, and my, our, her parents, my in-laws. Okay, so she goes over there. They live in Santa Claus, Indiana. It's almost a four-hour drive. And so she'll go over there, and sometimes she'll take uh, one kid. Sometimes she'll take both kids, and, and I'll stay back and, and work. And usually when she goes, uh, she'll leave me something. And does anybody, anybody want to, you think you know what that is? She leaves me a list, right? Uh, it, it's a honey-do list, right? The, things... Thing. You guys heard of a honey-do list? Honey, do this. Honey, do that. And so it's this list that I, I received uh, from her hand, and it's these things that she would like to see accomplished before she returns. And so usually how this works is, uh, is I'll, I'll calculate, okay, when is she coming back, right? <laughs> so how long, can I, how long can I do whatever I want before I... Get on. So, so I'll look at this list, and I'll say she's coming back in three days. And so the first couple days, man, 
I'll get my introvert on, and I would just, I'll hang out and watch movies and sleep and rest and relax, and then, and then I realize tomorrow's the day. Like, tomorrow, and then, like, all of a sudden, what clicks in is a sense of urgency, right? Like, I've got I've to get motivated. I've got to get going, and it doesn't matter if I have to stay up all night. I've got to get these things done because I want to make my wife happy, right? I want to please my wife. I want her to come home and say, you're the best husband in the whole world. I want that to, to happen, and so this honey-do list that I've been given creates a sense of, of urgency that I must accomplish these things before she returns. Now listen, what does this have to do with Paul? Uh, now Paul says make the best use of time because the days are evil. And so when I look at this honey-do list, what I say is I say I better make the best use of my time because my wife's coming back soon. Okay, I've got to make the best use of my time because I need to get these things done before she returns. And what Paul is saying is you've got to make the best use of your time because there are certain things that you need to accomplish and do as a follower of Jesus Christ before Christ returns because the days are evil. The days are evil. Paul is communicating a sense of urgency because the pervasiveness of evil in this world. Did you know that evil never takes a break? Evil never quits. I mean, sometimes, I'm going to be honest, we get, as followers of Christ, we can be lazy and apathetic. And we just always assume that we've got tomorrow and we've got the next day, and I'm probably going to live until I'm 70, 80, 90 years old. I've got time to do the things that I'm supposed to do. I've got time to get it right. Maybe you're in high school, maybe you're a junior high, senior high, or college student in here, and you're thinking, man, I've got time to get my life right with Jesus Christ. I've got time. You've got no sense of urgency right now because you feel like you've got the rest of your life ahead of you. So you can do whatever you want right now because that day that's coming is a long ways away. You're like me on day one after my, my wife leaves. You're like, party! You know, let's just hang out and relax, right? So, so here's what we have to understand is that we're not guaranteed that. The book of James chapter 4, he talks about our life is like a mist, you know, it's, it's here, and then it's gone. And we don't know when, it, when it's going to be gone, but we, we know it's here, and it's gone, and it goes quickly. And so we got to live with a sense of urgency because evil never takes a break. Evil is always working. You know, evil and the, and the devil and the evil, they're fighting for the hearts and the souls of mankind. They're, they're never taking it. They're always working to influence. Evil is always fighting for the hearts. Every day, it's everywhere. It's always influencing. It's always making the best use of our time. And sometimes we as believers, as followers of Christ, we are apathetic and lazy. And we assume that we've got time. We assume that we've got tomorrow, and we've got next decade, and we've got the next generation they'll pick up on our slack. We assume that we have time, that we can just sit back and take it easy. But what Paul's trying to communicate to, to the church in Ephesus 2,000 years ago is that you don't have time. That, that your life is a mist, and, and the life of others in, in your world, your, your family, your friends, the people in, in our community, their, their life also is a mist, and we're not guaranteed that we have tomorrow to share and to love and to show the love of Christ to them. And so while we are apathetic and lazy and we're just taking it easy, evil is fighting a war. And that's why we have to be focused as followers of Christ. We have to be passionate. We have to be uh, ready to fight this war instead of letting the war be won while we're sitting on the sidelines. That's why we've got to be living for God, and we've got to be uh, focused on being a light in a dark world like Jesus Christ calls us to be. You see, this life is a, a war for our soul. It's, it's a war for the souls of mankind, and if, if we're not going to fight it, then we're not going to win it. And Listen, Jesus Christ won the war, right? But, but the devil, man, he is sour and he is salty about it. And so he's like, man, I'm, I've lost and, and I'm going to lose, but I'm going to take as many people down with me. And that's what the devil's about. He's about taking as many people down with him. And what we need to be about is followers of Christ, as people who love people, is we need to be about sharing the good news and the hope of Jesus Christ that this world is not the end, that we have a promise of eternity in Jesus Christ, that we can be forgiven, we can be made whole, and we can be difference makers in this world. And if we don't fight, if we lay on the sidelines lazy and apathetic, then what we're saying to these people in the world who need Jesus Christ, we're saying to the devil, you're saying, you can have them. 
because I don't have time. Because I don't have a sense of urgency right now. Because I don't feel like it's important right now. You can have them. And I think if that I asked you, each, each of you as individuals, is that how you feel? You would say, no, Pastor Jeff, I don't feel that way. And if you asked me that, I would say, no, I don't feel that way. Like, I don't want the devil to take nobody. I don't want anybody's soul to be lost for eternity. But how we live our lives often tells a different story. Because we're not living with the urgency. Because we're, we're living like how we live don't matter. But the truth is, how we live does matter. And this is why. Because we've got a mission to proclaim the gospel, the good news of Jesus Christ. We've got a mission to make disciples before Christ returns. We've got this opportunity, church. It's a good thing. We've got this opportunity to make a difference in people's lives. Not just something that changes their life here on earth, but an eternal difference. So I made you guys something. I made you a reminder this week. Oh, you're going to get these as you exit today. I'm giving you a honey-do list, okay? Uh, I know it don't quite make sense because I don't call you honey, and, and God don't call you honey either. Uh, but that's the name of the list. It's a honey-do list, and I want you to have this as you leave today because I want you to remember some things. These are like the most important things that you need to remember in light of Christ's return. In light of the, there's going to come a day when, when either we're going to go meet him or he's going to come take us home. And in light of all that, we've got to remember a few things and we've got to be passionate about a few things. And if I could just give you three things because that's easy and simple and, and you can remember this, you can put it in your wallet, in your purse, you can keep it with you. Remember this. Church, we've got to be about loving God above all else. Matthew 22 says, Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, with all your strength. With everything that's in you, you've got to be about loving God. All right, that's the number one thing. And loving God, it gives you the ability to do number two, to love other people as yourself. To love other people as yourself. And we got to be about that, church. Too often, the church gets a bad rap, like we hate people, like we don't care for people, that we're ungracious and hypocritical. That's, that's not Jesus. That's not who, who he is. That's not who we should be as followers of Christ. We should be about loving people, loving people. And then third, we need to be about making disciples, about going and making disciples. When we make disciples, what are we doing? A disciple is a person who is a student of Jesus. And so when we make disciples, and, and all of us, as, if you're a follower of Christ, if you're a Christian, you sh you're, should be a disciple. You know, you're following Jesus. You're trying to be like Jesus. You're trying to be conformed to the image of Christ, to, to live how he told us to live and how he showed us to live. You're trying to be like, a, and if you're living like that, you're making a difference. Jesus lived 33 years, and he made a difference that is still resounding to this day, and we need to live in a way that honors Christ. We must be about Jesus' business, and listen, when you make disciples, you make a difference in the world. When you make disciples, you make difference makers, because that's what disciples are. Disciples, a true disciple of Christ is a difference maker. There's somebody who the people around them notice there's a difference in them, and it makes a difference in their life. Because they love like nobody else, and they forgive in ways that nobody else can, and they are generous with what God has given them. These people are difference makers, and that's who you and I are called to be, disciples of Jesus Christ. There's an urgency and an importance that should come with living for God. And we've got to understand that, that right now we're in the days of grace. Right now we're in the days of grace. That, that means God's grace is open for business, wide open. That means that, that if you come to God and you say, God, I, I, I repent of my sins. I, I know that I've messed up. I know that I fall short of your glory. I know that I'm not perfect, but God, I need your forgiveness. It means that we're in the days of grace and God will show you grace upon grace, and he will grant you forgiveness for whatever you've done. There's no way you're too bad for his grace. His grace is greater than all of our sin, and so he'll give you that grace right now. It's open to mankind if we ask for forgiveness, but there will come a day, church, when the days of grace will be over. There will come a day when it'll be officially too late, when Christ returns to call his bride the church home. It'll be officially too late. And so we've got to make sure that, that right now, in the days of grace, that we are passionate and purposeful about how we live 
our lives, that we are watching carefully how we walk because the days are evil. Now, I just want to tell you that if you're waiting to make that decision uh, in regards to your own soul or you're waiting to share the gospel with somebody else in your life uh, because you're nervous or anxious or unsure how they'll take it, when we wait to make these type of eternity-shaping decisions, we're playing a dangerous game with either our soul or the soul of somebody else. And church, we've got to be serious. We've got to be ready. We've got to be passionate. We've got to be willing to love God, love others, and make disciples. Let's look at Ephesians 5.17. The next verse, Paul says, therefore don't be foolish. So in light of what he just said, carefully how you walk, don't be unwise, but as wise, making the best use of your time because the days are evil. Therefore, don't be foolish, church, but understand what the will of the Lord is. Don't be foolish. So he's saying, he's saying don't be foolish, and understand what the will of the Lord is. Uh, that, that's, that's contrast here. That if we don't understand what the will of the Lord is, then we are thus being foolish. And so it's important for you, for you and I to understand what the will of the Lord is. And I'm going to give you that secret here today. Uh, because I want you to understand that it's completely possible for, for you and I to go about our lives uh, living by our own ideas and by our own strengths, uh, claiming to be a Christian. And we can be completely outside of the will of God. And maybe you're unaware of that, but if you don't ever take time to pray, if you don't ever take time to seek God out and read the Bible and listen to Him, then most likely what you're doing in your life is you're, you're living according to your own might and your own strength and your own wisdom, and you could potentially be totally outside of the will of God. If you're not making time to seek uh, God above all else, then the truth is you don't, you don't know what God's will for your life is. You know what you think is best. And the best way to find out what the will of God is, and so, people, so many people want to know that, right? Uh, so many people always, they ask that question. What is the will of God for my life? And we want this road map. We want this, this something delivered to us that we can follow. And what we want is we want this, we want this map. Like you used to print off on MapQuest. You guys remember that? MapQuest or whatever, you know? Maybe some of you still use it. No offense. Um, <laughs> But you used to like go and you put in your destinations and you'd print it out. And then you'd, you'd have this map with step-by-step -step directions. Go six miles, turn right. Go two and a half miles, turn. You know, you'd have these step-by-step -step directions that you would follow. to, And that's what we want as Christians, right? I want this for my whole life. I want to hold it in my hand right now. But what you have to understand is that following God is not having a MapQuest printout. Following God is more like having a GPS, Right? You just get in the car and you drive. And you make sure you're listening to the GPS and you make sure you're focused on what the GPS is saying. And sometimes you're going to go off track and that GPS is going to say, wrong direction, turn around, moron, right? That type of thing. And, and you realize you're going the wrong way and you follow that GPS. And, and what it does, it doesn't give you every step of the way. It gives you step by step. And that's what following Jesus is about. It's about seeking him and being close to him. And if you're close to the planner, then you don't need to know the plans, if you're close to the planner, then he's going to make sure that you're taking the steps that you need to take. He's going to make sure that you're walking wise because you're listening and you're carefully uh, going step by step where he wants you to be. And your faith is not in yourself and in this carefully laid out plan that you have before your hands, but your faith is in this GPS. Your faith is in the planner. In our case, as followers of Christ, our faith is in Christ and not in ourselves and what we have. And that's what we have to be careful of, church, is that we don't put our faith in our own strength and in our own will, but we make sure that we keep our faith in him alone and we, and we walk closely and we listen for his words. But if we're not making time out to seek God, to listen to God, to read his word, then, then we don't know God's will for our life because we're not close to the one who knows. The Bible, God's word here, this is our guide for walking wise. We talked a few weeks ago about its credibility. This is our guide for walking wise, for living a life that matters, that makes a difference in this world. This is our, our guide. And if the Bible tells us to do something, yeah, we don't have to think about it or, or pray about it. We just, we just need to do it. Too often we make that excuse. And I do it too, you know what I mean? Somebody have an opportunity to help somebody, and we want to pray about it. I'm not sure if I should help you right now. Well, that's kind of contrary to what the Bible says. I mean, it kind of says we should help them, right? Uh, I know that I should 
You want my forgiveness? I'm not sure if I should forgive you. Uh, well, the Bible kind of says you should forgive other people. So maybe, we, listen, if you have an opportunity to bless somebody, you bless them. If you've got an opportunity to feed the hungry, you feed the hungry. I don't even pray about that. If you've got an opportunity to, to show the love of, of God to somebody, you show the love of God. If you've got an opportunity to clothe the naked, clothe the naked. To feed the hungry, feed the hungry. To give help to the helpless, you help the helpless. Church, that's what we're about. That's what we're supposed to do. If you have an opportunity to, to take in the orphan, take in the orphan. If you've got an opportunity to show forgiveness, you show forgiveness. If you have an opportunity to tell somebody about what Christ has done for you, by golly, tell somebody about what Christ has done for you. You don't have to ask permission to do these things because we've been given a God-given mandate inside of his word that says that's what we are to do. That's what we are to be about. And if you're wise, you'll do that. And guess what else? When you do those things, you're living a life that matters. You're being a disciple of Christ. And you're making a difference in this world. You're not just making an eternal difference, but you're also making a, a temporal difference. When, when you feed the hungry and clothe the naked and care for the oppressed and give justice to those who are facing injustice. When you love God and you love others and you focus your life on going and making disciples, you're living a life that matters. And you're making a difference in our world. You're making a difference now and you're making a difference later. You're making a difference on both sides of eternity when you decide to live the way that Christ has shown us to live. And the, the truth is, I think most of the time we know this. And then the question is, well, why aren't we doing it? Like if we know what we're supposed to do, if we know how we're supposed to live, if we, if we know these things... Why aren't we doing them? My old house, we had a door that we painted. It was our guest bedroom door. And we had painted the room, painted the door. And I had the doorknob, and, and I just didn't put it back on. Like, I had it sitting there. I knew how to do it. It's not very complicated. And I just didn't do it. And, like, I'm going to tell you the truth. Months went by, and I didn't put that doorknob on there. And... Time flies, and, and things happen. It just wasn't important to me, you know? It wasn't important to me to put that doorknob on the door. But you know, to those people who got, tried to get in that door, it, it didn't matter that I knew how to do it. It didn't matter that I knew what I was supposed to do. All that mattered to those people that tried to get in that door was that I hadn't done it. It, it doesn't matter that you, you know you should do something. That doesn't change anything. Like, knowing what you should do doesn't change your life. Knowing how you should live, it doesn't change my life or anybody else's life. Knowing what you should do doesn't change anything. You know what changes things? Actually doing it. Actually putting the doorknob on. That, that changes things. And so there's things in your life right now that you know you ought to be doing. You, you know you ought to have changed. Things you owe you know you ought to be not be doing, right? You've got these things in your life that you know you should do, but you're not doing them. Why? It's not going to change your life. It's not going to make a difference. You're not going to be living a life that matters and, until you finally have the courage to take a deep breath and say, I, I, will, I will do these things. I'll put the doorknob on. I'll love people like I'm supposed to. I'll become a blessing to others. I'll feed the hungry. I will clothe the naked. I'll comfort the hurting I'll love the unlovable. I'll help the helpless. Knowing you should do those things doesn't make a difference. Doing them makes a difference. Doing them is living a life that matters. How you live matters, church. Because you have an opportunity to make a difference. Not just here, but most importantly, eternally. It's great that your eternity is secure and the love and the grace of Jesus Christ. But you are the most selfish person alive. If you can be content with your salva salvation, being secure, while others face eternity in hell. Church, we've we got to be serious about the great commission that Jesus has given us. 
to go and to make disciples. We can't be okay with, with people facing a Christless eternity in hell. Church, we can't be okay with that. We can't sleep well at night knowing that. So we must decide we're going to do it. We must commit ourselves to it. We must put a plan in action. We must tell others about him. We can't just know it anymore. We have to, we have to do it. So the question we ask today, does how we live matter? I believe it does. So let me ask you, how are you living? If how you live matters, let me ask you, how are you living right now? Are you living a life that makes a difference? Are you just kind of sitting around knowing that you ought to be doing a bunch of stuff and not really doing anything about it? God wants to use each of, of you, myself. He wants to use us as his creation to be his hands and his feet in this world. He wants to use us to make a difference in this world. He wants to use you to be a difference maker a disciple of Jesus Christ. But until you make the time to seek Him out, to draw near to Him, until then we'll never know what He could be doing through us right now. So I'm going to give you just a few things that I want you to, to think about here today. Uh, number one, I want you to think about committing to follow Jesus, committing to be a Christian, however you want to call it, putting your faith in Jesus, asking Jesus into your heart, all these different ways that we can put it, which mean the same thing. Uh, making Jesus number one in your life. Okay, no longer living just for you, but living for Him. Repenting of your sin. Saying, I know that I've messed up, I know that I'm making mistakes, but I'm going to turn from those things and I'm going to turn to you. And I'm going to commit to live my life for you. Committing to follow Jesus Christ. Committing to, to, to live like Him to the best of your ability. Uh, that's the number one step and that's the most important thing. And maybe some of you in here today, are wrestling with that, and that's a step that you know you've, you need to take, but you've been unwilling to take it so far. And I want to encourage you, if that's where you're at, if you're at step one and you're like wrestling with this idea, should I commit to follow Christ? I know it means that I'm going to have to change things in my life. I know it means that I, I can't stay the same, uh, but let me tell you, it means you become a new creation. It mean, means you become uh, what Christ created you to be doing what Christ created you to do, and you live a life of fulfillment, a difference-making life, and you have peace and hope for eternity. I want you to shy away from that opportunity. Yeah, it's a big decision, but it's also a great decision. And so if you're wrestling with that today, I want to encourage you, I want to challenge you to right now, in, in your heart, in your mind, I don't even care if you say it out loud and stand up and shout, uh, I want you to commit right now, if that's where you're at, wrestling with that, that I will become a follower of Jesus Christ today. That I will ask forgiveness of my sins and make a commitment to live my life for Christ. That I will today commit to be a disciple of Jesus Christ. It's a big decision, but it's the best decision Second thing I want to challenge you to do today is this. If, you, if you've crossed that threshold of the first step, the big step, then you also need to commit to seek Him daily. And that's where a lot of us are at, man. A lot of us are, are kind of at that step where we've, we've said our vows, right? But we, we've said our vows, kind of like a married couple. You say your vows, but, but you still gotta, you still got to be a married person after that, right? You still got to be faithful. You still got to be loving. You still got to be care about that relationship. You, you know, you've said your vows. You said, Jesus, I love you, but then you're kind of doing your own thing. Well, that's not how this works. We got to commit to seek him daily. I want you to, to challenge you not to go to bed tonight without deciding on what time you're going to set aside in your schedule tomorrow to seek God. Right, when is it going to be? Is it going to be like before work after work, maybe you've got some lunch time where you can get some solo time, but decide, when am I going to seek God daily? How am I going to do it? What am I going to do? Am I going to read the Bible? What am I going to read in the Bible? Am I going to spend some time in prayer? And if you don't know where to start, ask somebody, ask me, ask one of the pastors, ask somebody that you look up to in the faith, but commit to seek Him daily. Make a plan and, and do it. God doesn't care when you do it. He just cares that you do. And, and the last thing, 
the step three here is I want you to follow him as he leads you throughout the day. As God presents opportunities for you to be a blessing and to love and to care for other people, to show the love of Christ to people, don't chicken out, all right? That's the, that's the hard part. That's where it really gets hard, right? It's easy to chicken out. Uh, but I want to challenge you to, to step up, to, to, to decide that whatever it is, where God leads me, if it's uh, sharing the gospel with somebody, if it's giving my gloves to somebody or my umbrella to somebody, that I'm going to step up and I'm going to do it. I'm going to listen. If it's saying a kind word to somebody, that I'm going to do it. I'm not going to think myself out of it, but I'm just going to do it. And I want you to decide you're going to follow him as he leads you throughout the day. Whatever it is that he guides you to do, he'll provide everything you need to do it. So step up, step out on faith and do those things. How you live matters. Because how you live can have a potentially eternal impact on the lives of other people. I remember, I'll, tell you, I'll close with one story here. Uh, my, uh, my great-grandma went to church, and she was a, a God-loving woman and a God-fearing woman. Uh, my great-grandpa did not go to church, and he was far from God. And one day, a man from church came to my great-grandmother, and he said, Listen, my grandpa's name was Burl. Uh, he said, listen, Burl, what can I do to connect with Burl? What can I do to reach out to Burl? This man cared about my great-grandpa's soul. He cared about it. and So much so that he, was, he said, what can I do, right? What can I do to connect with them? And she, she said, well, Burl really likes to hunt and fish. And so this man came to Burl and, and my grandpa, and he said, you know, hey, let's go fishing sometime. So they went fishing a few times, and then they kind of developed a friendship. They went hunting a few times together, and they developed a relationship with one another. And it's through that relationship that they developed with one another that my great-grandpa made a decision to follow Christ, forever changing the, the lineage of my family, that he and my grandma would become followers of Christ together, that they would lead and grow a family that loved Jesus Christ above all else. And it was all going back to this man who, who cared about it, who lived with urgency. And there's people like that in your life right now, people that you care about. But right now, maybe you just don't have the urgency. Whoever that person is in your life that you know that needs Jesus, that needs to, to know the love of Christ, Find ways to build relationships with them. Find ways to care about them. Show them that you actually, you care about them. And share with them and show them in how you live the love of Christ. Because you never know the difference it's going to make in somebody else's life. Let's pray. God, as we come to you uh, today, Father, let us say thank you for, for loving us and for caring for us, for sending your son Jesus Christ to die on the cross for our sins so that we could be forgiven. Father, I pray that if there's any heart, uh, any man, woman, boy, or girl in here today who hasn't made the decision to repent of their sins and to turn to you, that today would be the day, God, that they turn to you, that they ask forgiveness, make a commitment to God to live for you all the days of their life. God, I pray that you be with us today. Help us to have an urgency. Help us to be passionate about fulfilling your mission and living a life that matters by making disciples. Father, we pray these things in your son's name. Amen. Amen.